So, um, so about the uh, the other thing about the uh, origination issue is uh, those who um, uh, who tend to think that we came from Mahavishnu. What they'll say is, well, what's the you know? We're talking about a sadhana that takes you into the leela of Krishna. So how can that be impersonal or myvad? How do you reach it? If you are adopting an apasiddhanta, you're going to reach it? If the guru preaches one thing and you preach another, but say, what does it matter? I'm doing strict sadhana. Many mayavadis do strict sadhana. Not many, but some. Or to pass you. The fact is that if the spiritual master has said, you come from a relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world. And he has said it many times. If you're going to be preaching, you're going to be asked the question, why are we here? That, that's not going to be able to be avoided. Did I deserve this? Why did I come here? And if you answer, well, I've got a view that uh, you're inside a Mahavishnu and now you're in a conditioned state in samsara and with an opportunity to go to a place you've never been, oh, all right, that's what it is then. That's the answer. But that's not what your guru, if you're initiated by Prabhupada, said to you. So how are you going to become pure in your sadhana if you're not doing the prachara right? You may have the sadacharya right. You may have uh, you may have a good paka character profile and behavior may be pretty good, and you may do the sadhana pretty strictly. That's possible too. But if your prachara is uh, flawed in such a severe way, on such a major major point of the sadhana. What to speak of any point on the Siddhanta, but a major point of origination, because it's a question that will invariably come up from your followers, disciples, people listening to you. It'll come up and they will ask, where was I originally? Am I really responsible for this? They may not say it like that, but that's what they're really asking. And your guru has said, here's the teaching. You are responsible. You did misuse your free will and you have an eternal relationship. That's why we call our magazine Back to Godhead, because you're supposed to return there, because that's where you originally were, that's your eternal home. Did it not cover the question? Yes. <clears throat> um, when we were talking on the phone the other day, you mentioned something about Shakti, difference between Shakti and I thought it was interesting, but I, I didn't grab the whole thing. In other words, are they saying, are the um, neo Godi Mutt, are they saying actually we can go back into being a Shakti of, of uh, Radha and Krishna? What I said, I remember what that section was, what I said is the Shakti doesn't have free will. The Shakti Tattva can't misuse free will. Oh, right. They can't fall down. The Jiva Tattva has free will they can fall down. Both are servitors, but in different ways. Shakti Tattva is considered higher, and that's bona fide, to consider Shakti Tattva higher than Jiva Tattva. The Jiva so what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to understand is, um, like certain deviations make sense to me, that the, uh, uh, <laughs> make sense in the sense, uh, in the sense that I can see how the, the hunkar get some, get something out of it. But if you but start splitting hairs, well, did we come from Mahavishnu or were we originally with Krishna? Both of which, both of which are, let's face it, are chintya at, at this point. Um, what, what, what is the benefit, how, how does one benefit, assuming that he's fairly serious about it? Well, remember, the process is to repeat what the Guru says, and that is not splitting hairs. In other words, repeat what the Guru says, what he gives you, is called prachar, you're preaching. But you have to do it. You have what he says, and then you repeat it. When you don't understand, when there is an apparent contradiction, you resolve it. 
then you repeat it. And when people ask you about it, because you've resolved it, you can help to unbewilder them by explaining the apparent contradiction, why it is apparent. And if you explain it in a very concise, clear manner, perhaps they will understand it and it no longer will be a contradiction for them. Splitting hairs is only relevant on minor things, but major siddhanta intrinsic to the, to the whole teaching, as well as the process, because the process is empowered when a major siddhanta such as we came here due to misuse of free will is understood at a very deep level that will empower the, the process also, the bhakti sadhana, the bhakti seva. So uh, splitting hairs is not applicable to this controversial issue. Splitting hairs is applicable to, to something like, you're rising at 5 a.m. instead of 4 a.m. and you can't make any advancement. There's your splitting hairs, something like that. So apart from the fact that you're um, misrepresenting the teachings of the Sampradaya and the Sampradaya Acharya, um, you're talking about Neogadimat. Neogadimat. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to come back to why, what would be the, the gain from doing that? Um, the gain is the guru becomes the all in all then. Ah. Because, oh, you've reached back there. You've made it back. Oh, I never was there. But you got there. You can get me there because you're there and you worked your way up. So I have to now worship you like anything to work my way back up so that you can say, here's how you do it. Here's how you work your way back up. Whereas when we were originally with Krishna, you have, you worship the Guru, but you worship the Guru as being also a servant of Krishna who did not use his free will. That has to be the attitude. He may be a sadhana siddha, or he may be a kripa siddha, but that attitude is the attitude to adopt when someone is siddha. But you have a confidence, a very deep confidence that is not present otherwise because it's eternal. You have an eternal sambandha jnana, you were there. It just, the cloud needs to be removed, a big thing. But nevertheless, it's there. It's eternally there. It's not operative now because of the cloud. So you have a confidence then. The guru is helping you remove the ointment from the eyes uh, the cataract from the eyes, but really what it comes down to is that the, the bogus guru who teaches this apasadanta of the wrong origination, he gets a tremendous amount of control over his chela. Hmm. Whereas the other guru still has control over his devoted uh, chela. But it is not an all-in-all -all type. In other words, we're ultimately equal in the spiritual sky because we. I've always been there. I'm there now. And you originally were there. So I know how glorious you are. Whereas the other one is that you have no glories. You were never there. No one ever was from this world. But I reached there. And you have no power to reach there unless I tell you the techniques. So how is that my bud? Well, in and of itself, it's not my bud. As I said earlier, when you're asking the question, it's a covert form of my bud. For this reason, I'll repeat it again because apparently it, you didn't catch it. <laughs> it's a covert form of my bud because if you're given a teaching in so many places, as Prabhupada gave a teaching in so many places of the origination, 